Hi, everybody, and welcome to this round of Take 20 with the network. These 20-minute presentations are an opportunity for network members to engage virtually to learn from one another on how to build strategies, implement programs, and move our work forward. Today, we're going to hear from Nataki Duncan from the School-Based Health Alliance uh, to learn about three new resources that will help the school-based health field move forward towards our goal to incorporate uh, oral health into the primary education system. So just a few housekeeping items. This presentation is, re is being recorded. I currently have everybody on mute, but at the end you can either unmute yourself to ask a question. Uh, you can do that over the phone by pressing star four, or you can press um, the participants button, uh, see yourself, the audio on and off button. You can unmute yourself, or you can type your question into the chat box, which is also to the right of the blue jeans window. Um, so go ahead, Nataki. Great. Um, thank you, Francis, for that great introduction. Um, again, thank you all for joining today's Take 20 on the Triad, Resources to Strengthen the Oral Health Community. Um, I'm Nataki Duncan, Program Associate at the School-Based Health Alliance, and I work alongside Tammy Alexander, um, Program Director of the School Oral Health Initiative, which is funded by the DinaQuest Foundation. We are proud to share with the field three new resources that we developed with our partners that will be an asset to your program development and management. I can click on to the next slide. Um, during this call, we will learn the purpose and goal of the School Oral Health Resource Library, review the resource library structure and resource submission process, um, explore further um, two resources for school oral health programs produced by the School-Based Health Alliance in the Oral Health 2020 Network, and I'll go um, a lot more de into detail about the development of those resources and where you can find them. So before I go on to the resources, I want to share with you all a bit more about the Alliance. The School-Based Health Alliance is the national school-based healthcare advocacy, technical assistance, and training organization based in Washington, D.C. The Alliance works to improve the health of children and youth by advancing and advocating for school-based health care. We aim to support strong school-based health care practices be the national voice of the school-based healthcare movement and expand and strengthen that movement and advance policies that sustain school-based healthcare. When health and education come together, great things happen, such as attendance improves, focus um, is better, and we all know that healthy students make better learners. We have a multi-pronged approach to strengthening and integrating oral health in schools. Our work from the beginning has been about engaging with all partners at the national, state, and local levels. And we are always looking for new groups, um, organizations, people to engage, seeking their input and feedback with as we move forward. To advance high quality practices, um, which is four components of the um, school oral health initiative that we have as, um, at the alliance that you see on your screen. To advance high quality practices, we have developed a resource library that will pull all school oral health resources, tools, and documents into a single portal for easy access. With the help of our partners, we are working to frame and better define the various components of school oral health, and this can lead to better data and outcome measures and other things. We are also working nationally to strengthen and support the policies that move towards greater integration of oral health into schools and communities, school-based health centers, and community health programs. And as for sound business models, we convened a work group to explore and develop resources to strengthen the sustainability of school-based oral health, and we're excited for what's in the pipeline to come. With this foundational understanding of the School-Based Health Alliance and our School Oral Health Initiative, I will now take a deeper look at the resources that we've developed. So the School Oral Health Resource Library. <clears throat> so why was, um, you might be asking yourself, why was the School Oral Health Resource Library created? With the help of our partners from ASTDD, CDHP, um, Georgetown, um, sorry, the National Maternal and Children Oral Health Resource Center and Oral Health America, 
we designed this research library as a platform to elevate resources from the national, state, and local levels and directly connect visitors to oral health resources for school-aged children and adolescents from reputable organizations. So who is this tool for? The resource library is designed for any and everyone who is engaged in school health at the national, state, and local levels. On your screen is a list which is not inclusive by any means of a few examples of folks who may be your who may not be your run-of-the-mill dentist, dental hygienist, or school-based sealant program staff. In this library, you'll find resources for everyone who is anyone engaged in oral health programs or school health activities. Now we're going to do, try to do a live walkthrough of um, the resource library. So I'll be sharing my screen once again, and hopefully it goes well. Oh. One moment. Okay. Pull it back up. Can you all see the screen okay? Just nod your head, yes or no? No? Not yet. No, we can see now, Nataki. Oh, you can see it now? Yeah. Great. All right. So this is um, this is our website, the School Based Health Alliance, and this is where you'll be able to find the three resources that we'll be talking about today and other resources for school health, um, school health resources or tools. So you will go under resources and at the bottom you'll see school oral health resource library. So here you are on the landing page of the library and you will notice that there are about these um, squares education, screening and risk assessment, preventative care, care coordination, cleaning exams and treatment, integrated services, data and program evaluation, and sustainability. Now, these um, component categories are actually organized around the five components of a school oral health program, which we'll be talking about um, later, right after this. So the basis of this uh, resource library, we wanted to really um, organize this in a user-friendly manner. So everything is laid out completely as is. So these, all of these um, aspects of the resource library are interactive. You can click on the squares and it will take you to that um, category where you will find a summary of what we believe is um, oral health education and our partners and a brief um, summary of description of the materials that you'll find in this category. And also to the right of it, you'll see a list, category, audience, and type. This is a filtering system. So we really want um, people to come here and not be able to, and not dig through and take hours or maybe longer than 15 minutes to find what they needed. So hopefully this um, filtering system is uh, an improvement and can be used by everyone and it's fast. Now, I mentioned earlier about um, contributing to the resource library. We wanted this resource library not to be something for you to just to go to for resources, but something that the field can also contribute to. So we have a resource submission process. And if you ever want to add something or you see that we can really benefit, the field can benefit from a, another resource you may have found, um, you will click underneath the filtering uh, button, which is red, add new resource. You will click here and you will be sent to a form where you can add in your resource. It can be either a document, a PDF, or any type of um, downloadable file, or it can be a website. We do ask that you um, properly uh, name the source and the publisher. We don't own any of these resources unless specified, and we are not taking ownership of any of these resources, but we are trying to elevate it to a national platform. So we would like to, um, to the best of our abilities, always tag the, res the source and the publisher. And once you're done, you can hit submit, and usually it'll take about uh, five or seven business days for us to get it into the library. So um, I'm going to hold for any questions um, later on, but I'm going to flip back to PowerPoint. Can you all still see the screen? Yep, still there. Okay, great. 
So now I'm going to move forward to our second um, resources, which is a white paper. So the school oral health and organizational framework to improve outcomes for children and adolescents. Important to the work of the learning community is the broader picture of school oral health. In the early days of this initiative, there were many questions about the definition or meaning of school oral health. Over the past two years, a variety of partners and leaders have grappled with this, um, this question, um, defining the boundaries or framework on school oral health for children and adolescents. So what are the key components that contribute to better outcomes for our kids? Why does this matter? It matters because we know that there's no health without oral health. We know that there are too many closed doors and not enough keys to open them for children and families to get the right care when they need it. We know that schools are a great opportunity to reach families and children and make a significant difference in the oral health of their students and uh, families. So I want to spend a few minutes just talking about the development of this resource. Uh, actually, a few seconds probably would be better. So the framework was developed as a starting point to answer that question of what is oral uh, school oral health. And I'm placing an emphasis on starting point. This is no, in no way a definitive um, um, framework. So the development of this resource was, a truly, was truly a collaborative effort and a, a lengthy process, as you all may know, when it comes to developing um, sound resources. At the first Oral Health 2020 School Goal convening in September 2016, uh, Mike Monopoly, I think you guys may have heard of him before, um, and Donna Behrens, founding director of the School Oral Health Initiative at um, the Alliance, presented a formal version of their earlier conversations on the parameters or conditions of school oral health to the group at the convening. During their session at the convening, there were breakouts and opportunities for small groups to kind of just mull on the initial language and concept and give feedback, um, challenge assumptions, and add or take away things that they felt that may not have been necessary. And this process of intentionally um, out doing outreach to the field continued um, with the help of our collaborators and many revisions later, we've developed five components and two supporting components of school oral health. And we are very thankful to um, the collective experience, expertise, and thoughtful advice and the many rounds of um, editing by this incredible group of oral health um, advocates and stakeholders. So moving forward with the um, framework. So there, as I mentioned earlier, um, these comp there are five components and two supporting um, components. Uh, they are the oral health education, oral health screening, preventive care, or preventive oral health care, care coordination, linkage to community-based or oral health, oral health care, and oral health treatment in schools, and the supporting um, components are data collection and sustainability. So the, these components really span a, um, a content, content, uh, um, span a network of care that we believe are representative of school oral health. Now, what does this framework make possible for the field? The framework will drive future conversations and work around a uniform set of nationally adopted data and outcome and measures, uh, standardized practice, demonstrate impact and comparability across the field and advance quality improvement for higher performance. This is what we hope will be um, the outcomes, the highest possible outcomes that it can achieve. And this is, of course, available. I have put links into the um, slides to share. So once Francis share, um, share it out with you all, that you will be able to just directly click and go to the um, resource. So moving on to our final, but not uh, last but not least, um, resource, which is confronting, confronting the consent conundrum. Lessons from a school oral health learning community. So we have the distinct pleasure to work with a group of innovative um, leaders in school oral health from school districts across the nation. Seven of them are from the top 10 largest um, US school districts, which is New York City, LA, 
um, Unified School District, Chicago, Houston Independent School District, Hillsboro, Clark County, also known as Las Vegas, and Miami. And we've also had the pleasure to um, work alongside an additional eight school districts from other smaller, but just as amazing um, school districts, four from South Carolina and one from New North Carolina, which is who are supported by the Duke Endowment. And a new addition of three school districts from Arkansas, sponsored by the Children's Hospital of Arkansas. Together, these school districts form the school or our health learning community. The formation of the learning community is an interesting process in itself, but I'll reserve that for another call. Um, the group is filled with diverse backgrounds and perspectives, but they all agreed that work on improving consent return rates is imperative to their work as it, is, as it serves as a proxy for utilization and reflects um, other issues such as school buy-in, parent involvement, um, student engagement, and et cetera. Um, each team has a unique approach to confronting their consent challenge. And this uh, white paper, Confronting the Consent Conundrum, highlights the unique approaches and challenges from each team. So with, while this resource, resource highlights the creativities and innovations of the learning community, it also highlights the importance and efficiency of school oral health programs to schools, families and communities. Um, it definitely shows how, um, how these programs have become an integral part of the fabric of their school and community. And uh, we really did our best to interview, do intimate interviews with the learning community members to get um, their stories, to collect them. Um, and other times the data, the story collection process was more organic, such as on group calls where they shared um, stories with each other on their strategies or challenges and successes. And I think those are probably some of the best ways that you can um, get stories. So to structure the resources for dissemination, we intentionally collected and organized stories that aligned with the Oral Health 2020 primary drivers for the school's target, um, which can also be found on socials if you would like to take a closer look of it, at it. We want to showcase um, how the learning communities work on improving consents relates to all aspects of advancing this goal to incorporate uh, oral health into schools. So uh, when you do take a look at this resource, you will find stories on school engagement, family engagement, community engagement, um, oral health education, and data collection and use. And of course, we always have more stories to share offline if, um, if you all are interested. And just to leave you all with uh, one of the quotes from the um, from this the consent conundrum um, resource, um, this quote just a little bit of background on it is from our Houston team about their Tooth Fairy event that they hold for the second graders, which they had adopted from um, the LA team. So there's a lot of sharing going on in between teams, and this is okay, of course always okay, and we. The team, wel the learning community welcomes this type of behavior. So the quote reads, picture students, all volunteers from a local high school, donning wings and wands and educating parents who have come to learn about the importance of oral health. The tactic engages older students as role models. Perhaps most importantly, it makes oral health fun for families. So of course, these resources are available online and all of these are hyperlinked. So you will be able to click um, right directly to them or you can browse through our, um, our website as well to find them. And of course, I, sh I will be uh, probably uh, remiss if I don't mention this. We do have a national school-based healthcare convention uh, coming up in Indianapolis. If you are, um, you want to learn and connect to others who are in the school-based healthcare world. That means school-based health, uh, behavioral health, mental health, um, dental, vision, all those type of things. I definitely recommend coming to this um, convention. It's from June 23rd to, to the 27th. And a part of um, that convention, we will be hosting the Oral Health 2020 School Goal Convening. It will be our third gathering with stakeholders around this um, OH 2020 goal. And of course, if you have any questions, um, please let us know. Here's our contact information. Um, we'll be happy to hear from you.
And I'm not sure if there's any questions or not. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nataki. That was wonderful. Um, so we can stick around for a few more minutes. If there's any questions, you can either type them into the chat box at the top right hand side of your screen. Uh, you can also feel free to unmute yourself um, either over the phone by pressing star four uh, or on your blue jeans window. The audio uh, on off button is at the bottom right of your screen. And also one thing as people are um, might be typing in their questions or are thinking of one, the you can register for the convention still open. Um, you can also register for the OH 2020 school goal convening. Um, that's still open too. Um, the link it will you can find the link on our on the schools um, page on socials is right there um, uh, under the banner or just register here or you can just email me for the link directly and I'll be happy to send it to you. And, we and it's have a couple questions in the chat box, Nataki. Um, Mary Foley is asking, is the whole paper available online? Um, which I'm guessing is the the white paper, the um, and the different resources that you shared. So do you want to answer that? Oh yeah. Please? So yes, it is available. The entire paper is available online. Um, so let me see if I can go back to this page. So once you get these um, slides, these are all hyperlinked to the the resource. So the oral health resource library is hyperlinked to the research library, and these last two will be hyperlinked to their appropriate um, paper. So there, it's available in its entirety. There's no preview or anything you have to go through like that. Um, so they are available online. So yes. And we'll make sure when we post this recording along with the slides, we can just include those hyperlinks as well, um, which I believe they were included in the announcement. Um, and then Nataki, another question, how can one join this alliance? Oh, that's actually a great question. Um, you can always just email me and I'll get you in contact with the right person or I can do it for you. Um, we try to be a very um, efficient team here at the alliance try to be a jack of all um, trades here. So just send me a quick email and I'll get you set up. Awesome, and I will make sure to include uh, both Nataki and Tammy's emails along with the notes or along with the recording for this. Um, so if there's nothing else, I just wanna say thank you so much, Nataki. Uh, that was wonderful, informative as always. <laughs> Thank you, Francis, for this opportunity and to the um, Dinner Quest and Oral Health 2020 Network. And also thank you to all of our partners that um, who contributed to the to these three resources. We really do appreciate your insight and it just goes to show that when you come together, amazing things come out of it. So thank you all. Thank you. All right.